Hello there, if you watched the video after this one, I'll show you actually how to build a uh, magnetoholographic viewing device, which is this. There are only really four components to it. It's extremely simple to build. But I'd uh, like to uh, talk about uh, the magic of ring magnets. Um, not real magic, of course. However, for the conventional human mind, it seems to be almost uh, magic because every uh, magnet seller will tell you, and you can actually Google or type in Bing for search results about the uh, fascinating and extremely peculiar nature of the field geometry of uh, and how uh, odd they actually behave, and they do behave odd, of a ring magnet. And there's a very, very simple answer for that because Mother Nature is not a complicated chick. She's like a hairy armpit chick with uh, muddy feet and a hemp skirt, right? Not complicated at all. By the way, these are ceramic. You should never drop them like that, that I just did. Um, let's just take a conventional magnet. This is a cylinder magnet and stick it underneath the, uh, the supercell here so we can actually see the uh, field lines. It's quite fascinating since I'm balancing it on top of a, a rolling uh, cylinder magnet here. You know, it's hard to keep that in place. Um, also, too, I notice that the, since this is a blue shifted over here and red shifted over here, um, that uh, this is the north pole of the magnet and this is the south pole of the magnet. By the way, also, too, right here along the center, you can see that little uh, red uh, a sphere right there in the center. Yeah, right here, right in the middle between either one of these uh, field lines is the plane of inertia right here, right between the two. That's where no magnetism exists at the midpoint of the magnet, which is not located there, but as a pressure mediation of there. So let's actually put it on its end and set it on top of uh, the uh, supercell here. Let's get it at an angle. Of course, you can never appreciate this until you have one in your hands, the sort of holographic effect that you get from one of these. All these lines are nothing other than the construct of a destructive interference between the magnetic and the dielectric, which is the conjugate geometry of the entire universe. The magnetic geometry is a torus or a donut shape. Wink, wink, donut shape, donut shape. Let's talk about that in a second. And uh, the uh, hyperboloid of the dielectric, which of course is where you don't see light and also too right here at the center of the magnet. You notice it's incredibly bright right here on the periphery. This is the burn in that I'm talking about. You see these lines where the image burns in. If you keep it sitting there for too long, it's not actual burn. It's just where the ferrite particles and the nanoparticles, the iron, are actually coming to rest in the ferrofluid. Right here in the center, where it's black and right at the edge, it's extremely bright. The only place that actual true magnetism exists on either side of what was this, uh, the conventional person this is the magnet. It's got magnetism. Well, that's not an explanation at all, and it's not even barely descriptive. The only place where actual true magnetism exists is right here along the centrifugal edge of the magnet, right here in the center, is the dielectric. There's a conjugate geometry of the universe, the hyperboloid and the torus, the torus of magnetism, the hyperboloid or hourglass shape of the dielectric. Everywhere we, let me move my light here. Everywhere we don't see light is where the dielectric is, and that is construct of dielectric. Everywhere we see light is construct of magnetic. It's really the fight and self-cancellation. This is also, too, the great confusion behind the dual slit experiment. People don't understand the dual slit experiment because they don't understand what light is, how it works, what it is. It's not a mission. It's not a wave. It's not a particle. It's not a wave-particle duality. Mother Nature doesn't even deal in dualities. But right here in the center of the magnet where we see nothing, we actually see, uh, of course, the dielectric portal to uh, the plane of inertia, which exists right at the midpoint there. But it's not located there because if I were to slice this magnet like a piece of salami, which you really can't because it's ceramic and it crumbles, each little slice would have its own uh, midpoint of a counter space right there. You see that bright white line right there? There's the plane of inertia. Isn't it amazing, the holographic effect? What you're seeing in the video is absolutely nothing like what you actually see when you have one in your hands and you get it close up to your face. You see that bright white line right there? You see it? That's the subdivision between antinomies of everything. And of course, right now we're looking at the side view of a donut or a, a torus. We're also too looking at the conjugate geometry of the entire universe, the hyperboloid and the magnetic. Um, the uh, hyperboloid of the dielectric and the uh, torus of the magnetic. So, 
There's a lot of phenomena around a ring magnet, and the reason why people can't explain it is because they have no idea what magnetism is, nor its specific geometry, or the fact that it's only one half of the conjugate geometry of the universe. Let me get ready to set this on top of the supercell. And the reason for that, you know, obviously there's nothing here in the center, it's empty, it's just a ring magnet, is that the magnet itself is shaped like, although not precisely, pretty damn close. Uh, is shaped like the toroidal field of magnetism itself. So when you actually have a magnet that is shaped like the geometry of a magnetism itself, then this is where the quote-unquote magical characteristics of a ring magnet uh, come into play. You have a magnet whose physical shape is exactly the same shape. Not exactly, but pretty damn close. It's still a torus or a donut. The same shape as the field geometry. So when the physical geometry matches the field geometry, what we actually have then is a multiplicative point source phenomenal object. And let me set this here on top of uh, the supercell. There we go. Very slowly. No, oh, maybe not so slowly. There we go. Also, too, right here in the center, We'll see where nothing is in the center of the magnet. We actually see that same thing that we saw on the face of any regular large conventional magnet. Oh, that one magnet moved this magnet. You see how I could move it around in real time? We still have the constructive and destructive interference between the two, but we actually have a, a multiplicative point source field phenomena where the magnet is physically shaped like the uh, toroidal geometry of the magnetism itself. But a magnet is a dual entity. It is magnetic and a dielectric geometry, the hyperboloid and the torus. Between the magnetic and the dielectric, let me place it underneath the supercell here. It's uh, almost a little bit more beautiful that way, some people think. Here as I actually pan around it, you can actually see it. But also too, right in the center there, that little pinpoint of nothing where there's nothing there's nothing there because the magnet is right here where it's black the entire face of the magnet is uh, the dielectric and of course the centrifugal edge is a toroidal so you have a toroidal on top of a toroidal you have a compound multiplicative point source object this is the actual explanation behind the odd phenomena that people observe and you can find countless thousands of examples on any google search about uh, why ring magnets behave. They don't actually explain as if ring magnets are really odd. They behave strangely, unlike other magnets that are of the exact same strength. And just because it's shaped like a ring magnet, we get this unusual phenomenon that no one can explain. I just explained it to you because Mother Nature is not complicated. It's not complicated at all. So anyway, if you watch the video after this, I will show you how to build one of these. And it is so simple, you'll slap yourself on the forehead because it's unbelievably simple in the 3D holographic effect is fascinating. But once again, everywhere you see light is the magnetic. Everywhere where you see absence of light, we have the dielectric. This conjugate geometry of the yin and yang of the entire universe. Just think about this for a second, ending this video here. Think about the second that where there's nothing here in the center of this magnet, we actually have the exact same thing at the center of this ring magnet right here. You see that black circle right there? Yeah. We have the same thing here where nothing is as we have on this or any other conventional magnet. You see, the exact same portal. And portal is an incorrect word. People like to think of something like that as a portal, but the exact same thing. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. I hope you like these videos. If you do, click the link below. Any donation is kindly welcome. And have a good week. Bye.